Oh! Why is it smoking? Recently on our road trip to Scotland, you'll have seen that Rory bought a motorbike. 15 if you want it. B deal. However, after a few minutes of questionable suspension testing, we found out some concerning news. How, how does one go about category Ding a bike? With that in mind, we dragged the bike into Martin's oh. unit, oh, hey! got the thing started, and began negotiating again. We got Alzheimer's. Got... <laughs> <laughs> Twelve hundred quid, Martin. No. Hold out your hand. Not a chance. Oh come on. No. Go on then. <laughs> yes! Bike now secured for a second time, we loaded the KTM into the back of a Range Rover and travelled south back to Auto Alex HQ, which is where you join Rory and Gareth now. So the bike was written off in 2014, so not long after it was actually bought. This looks like this is a 2020... 2020? Yeah, this looks like this is 2020, everything else except for the frame which the frame, <coughs> serial numbers, we did check, does match up to the logbook. It is cool, I, I do like it, even though it is ropey. You know, I've, I've been around it, spotted a few things. Again, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but there are certain things that anyone with a bit of mechanical knowledge would go, wow, yeah, yeah I wouldn't ride that. All right, so the things I know, Yeah. battery is doesn't hold any charge. Yeah. We did get it started. Oh, cool, Yeah. does it sound all right? It sounds fine. Great. Absolutely fine. The headlight, though, was not working. Okay. But the, according to the MOT history, from when it was converted in 2020, it did do some miles. So I, I assume the headlight was working at some point. Unless it had a daytime MOT. The brakes are completely seized on. Yeah, I noticed that. Gears seem to be fine. And then other than that, I don't really know too much about bike mechanical stuff. So, Perfect. Uh, I, I thought the suspension felt a bit crap, but apparently I've been told that that is quite normal. It is, it is well on these bikes it is a little bit squishy. You are lower down. That, that spring does look like it needs to replace. It, well. it doesn't look the happiest, and there's a, lot, there's a fair bit of corrosion on, but I think for today, yeah, it'll be fine. So cosmetically wrong, I don't like these tail tidies, they're hideous. I don't think you'll be riding pillion, so it'll be grand taking these off. You can see it's probably a little bit seized by the angle there. As for the sprocket itself, it's actually not too bad. So on your gear selector, that, that's, that's done that finger tight. I think the threads, I think this has been crashed at some point, Rory. I know it's been crashed, Gareth. It was a, <laughs> it's a cat D right off. But this is super loose. This is me just doing it with hand, by hand. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that so that, that's fun. not, yeah, that would have been made an interesting little run. So that was just in there and you can still use it, but that would have disappeared swift-like. So that's your clutch. Ah. Oh. Which is all right, because it's not your brakes. So, RNG have sent us a whole range of their engine case covers. So if you do spill, at least that stops What do you mean by spill? Spill, as in you spilt on the road, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> so they sort of fit like that. So you can still see your oil window, and you can still fill it, and that'll fit on the top there. And then we have another RNG case cover for the other side of your engine. There we go. We have your cotton reels for paddock stand, which we've already sort of put on, but these allow it to ride a little bit further out. And then these are for your forks. So these little crash bunks fit either side. So if you do go down, it doesn't smash up the fork. And then Scorpion have also contributed to the mix, which is really kind of them. Oh. <laughs> this is worth more than your bike, Rory. Should we start off by pulling this off? Because we don't need that but I might not want to be yobbo loud. Okay, let's pull it off. Get up. <laughs> right, let's pull it off, let's pull it off. Here we go. So that makes all the difference. A big old ball. All right, Rory, that is a beautiful exhaust. I think we should start by putting this bike in a skip. We should start tail tidy, and I want to hear the bike start, so should we put the battery in? Okay, yeah. Yes. Well, that's a very big battery. That that's a good. lot bigger than the battery I just got you. Great. Either way. Oh, well, that's going to rattle around in there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, just when you're cornering, just slide from side to side. We're going to need to order another but battery. Oh, goodness sake. I'm very excited to hear this start. Before Rory and Gareth try and find out if they can get that KTM started, a reminder from me that if you want to buy yourself a used bike, car or van, run a car vertical report on it first to ensure it's not been crashed, stolen or clocked.
If we take a look at my beloved Phil, now with a personalized number plate, you can see that we've got green ticks for odometer, finance and damage that tells me and you that this car does not have a shady pass, except for with me. Isn't that right, Phil? And now to give you an example of a car vertical report that would give me cause for concern, check out this VW Polo, green ticks for odometer and finance and amber warning for damage. So let's scroll down and have a look at some pictures which we have here. The front left wheel is completely skew. Keep on scrolling, the, the right side has also been hit. Keep on scrolling, the rear looks okay, but the whole side has been damaged quite, quite badly. So this is definitely, and all the airbags have gone off as well. So you would know because of car vertical that if this were to come up on Facebook market, Marketplace or wherever you like to buy your cars as a clean title car, that that is a big fat lie. So again, do yourselves a favor when buying a used car, van or motorbike, run a car vertical report on it first. What's more, as ever to sweeten the deal, you will get a massive 20% off using the code V2. Back to it. What's wrong with the kill switch? Oh, is that why it kept going in and out? Yeah. Okay, so there's something wrong with the kill switch. It's very unhappy. That, that would be quite dangerous if you're riding and it just randomly kills itself. How old's the fuel in this bike? Oh, very old. Oh, that's probably why it's not happy at yeah. all. The whole idling is no good. With the KTM now assessed, it was time to remove the rear wheel, which was easier said than done. Gareth, this is the first thing on the bike. I know. We're already struggling. I know. It's just... Oh, oh. it turns, it turns. Do you oh, wanna, wait, do you... the, the whole thing's turning. <laughs> Holy what moly. What's wrong with this thing? Go, go. Oh, oh, shit, that's nearly out. Yeah. Go on, Gareth! Go on! Oh, my hammer hand is so sore. <laughs> Go on! Go on! Yeah! yeah. 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 You, did good wow. you can see that they are quite thin. If I take that away, it's worth a change and going in the bin. Huh? Talk it. That was talked. To what? Free yogurt duggers? With Rory having to go back to do the job properly, Gareth got to work removing the chain assembly. Any budding mechanics that are going from vehicles to motorbikes, get yourself a really good torque wrench because chances are you will break everything because it's children torque settings on motorbikes. Do you have goggles for me? Do I just need to look away? Yeah? Yeah. Right, let's do this. Gareth, you made that look easy. Yeah, well, it's only a 520 chain, so it's only a little one. That's 6,000 miles, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think you'll be excited about this chain. It's gold. Oh. Voila. Yeah? Yeah. It's really good. It's gold. It's gold. <laughs> 25 minutes of my life pulling off a bloody indicator. Well, I had to cut through that with an angle grinder. I don't like this bike. I take everything good I said about it bad. You know what, if you don't, if you don't want a rusty bike, drive a car. So new piston is in there, and I think we're good to put the rear wheel back on, because Rory, you did that sprocket earlier. There's a lot of extra hardware that it gives you, but I'm gonna guess that you don't need it. I hate bikes. You can't say that, Rory. We're trying to get more people into bikes. Gareth, I don't like bikes. With the caliper now rebuilt, the new sprocket and wheel were refitted. It'd be good for another, well, according to this, 6,000 miles. The next step of the process was then to fit the new chain, which seemed to anger Rory. Why don't they send you the correct size? Um, I don't know. I don't own the bike shop. Is everyone ready? I am ready. Well, this is not the full, because we've still got the decat to do. This is only half loud. Yeah, OK. It's a lot more bassy. It's a lot more bassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if this goes in... Oh, that is a lot quieter, isn't it? Yeah. That's disappointingly quiet. Go, right, flip it. 
<laughs> yeah? Woo! Nice scorpion! <laughs> Train on. So I'm just measuring this as I'm going along because I don't want to overpress it. It's quite OCD, this whole thing. I'm quite bored. You gotta take your time, Rory. Gareth, my thing took. I'm like, my exhaust My gone, thing. And you've been working on this side for like hours. Look, Rory, do you want this to fail when you're on the road racing along, racing trucks on the M40? Gareth, it's only got 15 horsepower. As long as there's a piece of cable tie holding that chain on, it will stay on. Oh, I'm bored. This tool. I'm bored. I'm bored. And this is a grand tool. Yeah. I'm re I get really excited about chain work. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, decap pipe is now on because it's track bike uh, and let's see what it sounds like now Yeah, It's a it's a fair bit louder. That is a lot louder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you happy Rory? Whoa! Oh! <laughs> That's pretty filthy. Again, 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 again. Where is it smoking? Neighbors are going to be so happy. Why is it smoking? I can't hear you above the. The crack. bike is on fire, and there's oil leaking here from the exhaust. That's fun sensation. Thank you very much, Scorpion. Uh, you've made my day because I quite like that pop. Um, so the pistons are stuck in the front caliper. Uh, we did get your air compressor that you very kindly brought to the unit, but you have not a single attachment to it. So, um, we're left with a tyre pump. You ready? Yeah. Jesus. Oh! Gareth, what just happened? Well, it exploded in my face, but the piston came up. <laughs> but only one of them. Yeah, caliper servicing is, uh, it's really, really tough work. Take them out of this bag, lube them up, and then push the pistons in while Alex struggles on trying to get the other piston out. Did you do it? Yeah. Oh, well done. It's <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, it's fine. With the little 125 KTM Duke almost fully recommissioned, all that was left to do was to attach the mirrors, fit the RNG engine covers, and give the bike a good old fashioned service. While drinking beer, of course. I think that is it. And it looks, it looks pretty good. Which is an understatement, because when the bike arrived in the back of a Range Rover, the unloved Duke was worth nothing more than scrap value. But after a full day of graft, it not only looks a million times better, it also sounds and breathes better, and is protected should the bike ever be dropped. But as they say, the proof is in the pudding. So let's see what Rory makes of his freshly recommissioned starter bike. You join us the next day for his maiden voyage. This is perfect. I can't wait to get my CBT back on this. Oh, we're going to have to go for rides, Alex. 